Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and for those of you who are visiting my channel for the first time, welcome, subscribe, like, share and yeah, I tend to, um, well today I'm going to um, talk about something that's partially um, based on experience and on the other hand, it's just to keep you on the alert because we are always hearing about these no win, no fee adverts. They're in your face all the time. You get people calling you saying, have you been in an accident? And you're thinking, why the hell are they asking me if I've been in an accident? You know, if they knew I'd been in an accident, then they'd have my details. But what it is, is that these personal injury firms are looking for anyone who wants to claim. And the reason why they want, the reason why they do that is really because they're hoping that someone will put in a fraudulent claim. I'm not saying all of them, but these scam ones that keep calling you every five minutes, asking you um, if you've had an accident, it's really to draw you in. Now, suppose you did have an accident within the last three years, which is the deadline. They have to make sure that the claim has been completed within three years. So supposing you did, you had had an accident and you hadn't claimed and you couldn't be asked. And they say to you, have you had an accident? Just And it just it's just coincidental that you did have an accident. And they'll say, oh, well, if you've had an accident, we don't charge anything if we don't win. You don't have to worry. And you're going to think to yourself, well, I've got nothing to lose. But you have. I'm going to come to that in a minute. So what happens is they'll ask you a few questions on the phone. And they'll say, would you like to take advantage of this um, offer? No, no win, no fee. And you'll probably say yes, because once again, you feel as though you've got nothing to lose. But what happens is, is that they'll, they'll say to you, OK, then send me your email address and we'll send you our agreement and um, everything you need to know. And you're thinking, OK, no big deal. No win, no fee. So when that document comes in, you'll probably sign it off and you'll think, well, you know, it doesn't make no difference. I didn't have any money before. If I get a little extra money, then that's good. What you don't realise is that these no win, no fee lawyers have to get paid somehow. And how do they get paid? They get paid out of all the successful claims. So if you are successful, you are paying for those who are not successful. And if you're not successful, you still can end up paying. And you know why you can end up paying? Because, number one, Supposing you have decided to go through with this claim and you don't have all the information or you tell a few porkies or you exaggerate your symptoms, they can actually cut you out and say, look, we're not prepared to work with you anymore. Now, if they say we're not prepared to work with you anymore because they found out you've been dishonest, you've exaggerated the symptoms or anything else that's not quite right, then you will have to pay their fees up until that point. Their fees are normally about £300 an hour, plus their disbursements, plus VAT. Now, it doesn't look so attractive now, does it? Because it's not. Now, OK, in my, in, in my situation, as you know, I was involved in a car accident. And when I went to the hospital, he diagnosed me with whiplash. And then they told me, OK, I've got to see, have, see, have physiotherapy. So I've gone to have my physiotherapy. And it was it was quite OK. I mean, I'm not having any serious symptoms now. You know, it's just little odd little twinges. My neck is still stiff. My back is still stiff. But I'm assuming that after about three or four sessions of physiotherapy, I should be fine, hopefully. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, I got, I, I instructed them in the beginning of Jan, in the beginning of June. But 
when I was doing this um, video, I realised I had not received a conditional fee agreement, which is equivalent to the no win, no fee agreement. That's what they call it, a conditional fee agreement. Now, what happens is, is that you're supposed to get that conditional fee agreement from the start, but I didn't. So I thought to myself, well, OK, if I get it today, that means my 14 days after I've read it um, will kick off my 14 days calling off period. If I want to cancel, we kick off after I've read it. Oh, no. It kicks off from the time that you've instructed them. And because I've instructed them more than 14 days ago, even that was verbally, that 14 days has now expired. And it's got that in the contract. So it doesn't really matter that the agreement arrived late. What is important the day that you instructed them? Now, technically, when, when they instruct you, they're supposed to tell you about all these disbursements, about you having probably you may have to pay, well you probably will have to pay um the opponent's fees if it goes to court and stuff like that there's lots of things that you can end up paying for that you don't end up getting the money now you've seen um national helpline and all of these um people that say no win no fee you call them and they transfer you to a solicitor now this isn't the case that i'm talking about that I'm on now. This is one that I was going to uh, pursue a few months ago. Well, it was last year because um, I had I fell over a, um, what do you call it? An elevated, an elevated drain and I sprained my ankle. So, you know, I was off sick and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to put in a claim because that is neg negligent. The fact that that elevated drain caused me to trip. So I I put in the claim. Now I, I notified um, the council first and told them about it. And the next time I went, about three months later, they'd fixed. They'd they'd kind of submerged the drain. Anyway, meanwhile, I decided to take out one of these people. Called me, and I thought, what have I got to lose? Let me call. Let me call them and let them act for me. But anyway, these people did ask me so many questions. I thought, hey, hang on a minute. Why do you need my legal? Why do you need my legal insurance details if it's no win, no fee? Oh, well, just in case you lose, we have to claim back um, the opponent's fees. And that will have to come out of your insurance. So had I not asked that question, I wouldn't know. So what happens is, is that if you win, they take out their 25% success fee, which is 25% of the damages that you're going to receive. On top of that, they take out the disbursements. On top of that, they take out... Um, they put VAT on it. So there's the fees, there's, there's the disbursements, and there's the VAT. And then in the case of National Helpline, or these other ones that refer you to a solicitor, there's another 20% on top. So what are you left with? So you have to, uh, you have to ask yourself, is, it, is, is something better than nothing? Is my claim legitimate? Have I been totally honest? Are all my papers intact? Do I have all the receipts? Can I prove it? Do I have witnesses? It's not straightforward. And if it becomes tiresome and you think to yourself, oh, I can't be asked with all of this. They want me to go to the other side of the world to go and get a physiotherapy or they want me to go. Or if it is the opponent appealing against what you've said, they could ask you to go anywhere for your treatment. And if you refuse, then you're liable for the costs of, of, the, uh, of the process love the solicitor's fees and the disbursements and you could even be liable for the opponent's fees because if then if your solicitor pulls out you still have to pay them up to the point that you put that they pulled out because you have not cooperated you need to return all their telephone calls you need to attend all the appointments that they give you 
and you need to do every single thing that they say. You have to provide all the evidence, everything that they've asked for. If, the, if you're seen as being uncooperative, they can pull out, knowing that you will have to pay their fees and their disbursements. Now, that is provided that, you, that they've said that they are going to pull out because of your dishonesty or your lack of cooperation. A lot of people who enter these no win, no fee, they think it's an easy process, you know, but you need to be aware of all the intricacies and the intricacies are not straightforward. Technically, if like in the second, like in what I'm in now, where I was hit in the back of my car, you know, I hit the back of my head and, you know, I got, I got, you know, the doctor diagnosed me with whiplash well, I could say that I have more or less a 90%, um, I have a 90% chance of success in getting something. But the fact still remains that out of that something, you know, you can claim back your, um, you can claim back the fees from the opponent, but that's not, they don't do that out of the money that you've got you have to do that separately on your own so a lot of times they'll say to you have you got legal insurance and it's for that reason if you want to claim um, back your the your solicitor's fees which are usually they can be up to five grand you know sometimes ten grand depending on how, on how pro, high profile the case is you can end up paying 10 25 whatever one guy, um, I'm going to put the link in, in, in the description, he had a case and um, he, the, the solicitors said he wouldn't win. Now, because they said he wouldn't win, he decided he was going to pursue it al alone. Now, you would think that because they said that it wouldn't, they, it wouldn't win and they were withdrawing, that they had no right to any money. But he pursued it on his own. He was successful. He got a bill from the solicitors for £24,000. He appealed against it. And I think his appeal was upheld. I can't remember the reason why it was upheld. But I think it's because they hadn't made it clear in, the, um, in their notes that they were going to still take the success fee the disbursements and the um, VAT, even though they um, withdrew from the process. Now, when I was looking at the conditional fee agreement that I got today, based on that, I decided I looked at that, and my one actually says that even if they withdraw or they um, they withdraw or they decide that it's it's not worth pursuing, I would still have to pay their success fee and their disbursements and the VAT. So at least I know up front because I read it. Now I can think to myself, you, and it's too late for me even to get out even if I wanted to because the 14 days has lapsed. Technically I'm in an agreement so you have to be careful what you're doing. I'm letting you know this because a lot of people, this no win, no fee, it does sound straightforward. And if you've got 100% sure of winning, then you're fine. But supposing that guy hadn't gone in my back. And even then, even though he was in the wrong, he can still claim that... Um, I reversed or he could claim that he could, you know, um, what you call it, leave the country. He could do anything. He could scarper. He could um, decide that he's going to dispute it. When all of those things come into play, then you could technically be responsible for paying fees because they're not going to be getting the fees from the opponent for their solicitors because he's no longer around. So you can't take, take it for granted that just because it's no win, no fee, and you are not responsible and you're not at fault, that you may not be responsible for paying solicitors fees, astronomical solicitors fees. 
So all I'm saying is that most solicitors, they won't take it on unless they think you've got a good chance. But there again, like I said, they're not going to be, they're not going to know if, if a, um, opponent is going to scarper or if they're going to start changing up the program and saying that this happened or that happened and start telling lies they don't know what's going to happen they don't know if the other side is going to pull out they don't know so because of that you have to be extreme you have to be aware of what you're getting into when you sign a conditional fee agreement which is the no win no fee it's not a, it's not usually a very long document it's usually about two page and it's not complex like some documents it is pretty straightforward so you should be able to understand what it says but basically um the key points which i've highlighted um is that they will ask you to have a legal expense policies for the reasons stated um they will acknowledge that you have a reasonable chance of success, which um, they're not going to say you're definitely successful because anything can go wrong. So if they say reasonable, you have to hope that you will. They normally won't take it on unless they're pretty sure because it's not really worth their while. But it is worth their while because they still get paid one way or another, whether it's through your insurance or whatever but they'll only get the disbursements they won't get as much as a success fee but it's still money their disbursements are high their disbursements are still the three you know all the letters that they've written if they've made appointments for you and when you're thinking it's 300 pound an hour it's still a lot of money some of them say um, that they can only take up to the amount that you've been awarded can you imagine? So the whole of your um, damages claim can be lost in sol solicitor's fees if it goes to court. Normally, if it doesn't go to court, you're usually OK. But there's also um, they also say something about if, if the other side offers you something, an amount, and then the solicitor tells you that you shouldn't accept, then they settle at an even lower amount, you still have to pay the disbursements of the opponent plus the disbursements of your solicitor, only your solicitor won't charge you for their fees. You know, the success fee and all of that. But that, I, that to me isn't fair because they're the ones that have told you not to accept the offer. So there will be a point where you get an out of offer, um, an out of court settlement and if you do you have to tell your solicitors um, I don't know um, how that works in principle but as long as you pay them what they have asked you shouldn't have a problem I know one woman she got her money because they paid it into her account she said oh well I'm not paying those solicitors what did they do they hounded her day in, every day, three, four, five times a course. I mean, it was literally harassment. I don't know what's happened now because this is like four or five years later. So tech and also one thing with these no win, no fees. Suppose you die. They got all their things covered. If you die, you're supposed to have appointed a successor to take, take over the claim so that they make sure they get their money. And if that successor refuses to pay them, they have they have the ability to get that money from your estate. They don't rump when it comes to their money. So, you know, no win, no fee doesn't mean no cost. All it means is that you may not have to pay as much. That's all it means. And they'll make sure that you have an insurance to cover their costs. Um I've said about the 24,000. If you do not cooperate, they can charge you their fees and disbursements and the rate will depend on who is handling the case. Now, you know, you have different people. You have barristers. I don't know how much they charge an hour. Maybe about 1,000 something an hour. Or you have your your general um, lawyers or their trainees. That will all depend on who's handling the case, how much your fees and disbursements will be. They won't be able to tell you what that is up front. Um, 
but it can charge between 250 to 400 pound an hour for the basic lawyer. Um, if you call them and give them information, even though you haven't signed anything, it will imply an agreement. So it doesn't mean that because you haven't signed anything that they cannot act for you. They can still proceed based on your verbal agreement. Um, but like I said, it'll have to be three years. They have to be able to complete it within three years from the day of the accident. So you'll find that they'll want to process it pretty quickly to make sure there's no hiccups and to make sure they get their money. Um, what else? It would normally take between nine and 18 months to settle your claim. Um, what else? To take out a no win, no claim, they will want to see your passport, driving license, bills within three months for money laundering purposes, but it's probably to see if you're legally entitled to claim for your injury. Um, because technically, if you're a non resident or something like that, you're not entitled to be in the country, you won't be able to claim for the injuries. So you have to be careful because if you go in for this no win, no claim and you're not legit, you're still going to have to fork out that money and give them and you're not going to get anything in return. So be careful. Um, oh, yeah. And the recovery money is, is also linked to the DWP, you know, Department of Work and Pensions recovery unit. So if you're claiming any benefits or universal credit, they'll know that you've received this, these, this money. So it's no point you know hiding it and making it look like you haven't received anything because they will know so that's important to know um if you you have to pay fees solicitors fees disbursements and all that kind of stuff if you do not cooperate if you fail to attend gp appointments or court, court hearings fail to give the necessary instructions change your mind after the cooling off period and withdraw instructions so all of those things, you're going to have to pay their solicitors be out of your own pocket. So once you've taken it on, don't think about coming out of it. Um, I've said the thing about the death. What else is there? Um, uh, you need a legal expenses policy. I've said that just in case everything goes tits up. E.g. solicitors tell you not to go and accept the offer from the opponent and you end up getting less. You will then have to pay the opponent's fees if you lose. Solicitors can end the agreement if they think you can't win. But if you do win, in some cases, with SSB law, you will still have to pay their 25% success fees plus disbursements. Once you win, you are entitled to seek recovery from your opponent or part of all of the solicitor's charges and disbursements. But you have to do that by yourself. So you're going to have to hire a lawyer to do that, I would think. I don't understand why they can't claim that all as a part of the um, payment. You know what I mean? I think that's really unfair that they only deal with the personal injuries and yet they've incurred all of this debt on your behalf and then you have to pursue that to get it back if you want it back. And because it's usually so high, the other side normally doesn't want to have anything to do with it. So I think a lot of times they just hope that people are happy with the um, compensation amount and they just let forego the disbursements and let them get away with it. But you have to remember, if it's five, ten thousand pounds, it is worth pursuing, especially if you win the case. And if you've got the time to do that, um, if you receive interim damages, solicitors may ask you to pay the disbursements up to that point. If you receive provisional damages, solicitors are entitled to payment of their basic fees and disbursements. If you lose, you will not have to pay your opponent's costs unless there's this section that you're supposed to look at. So you'd have to look that up. Um, you will have to look at the conditions, but they will find a way to recoup their um, losses. Um, you may have to pay the after the event insurance premium, which is a legal expense insurance um, that can be purchased on behalf after an accident or incident has taken place. This is usually purchased 
in the absence of a suitable um, BTE cover, whatever that is. And it's specifically tailored to the type of claim you're pursuing, but these are quite expensive, I hear. Um, your money is normally protected um, under the, you know, if you get a proper solicitor, authentic solicitor. And I think those are the key things that you need to know. Like I said, I will put some information in the link below. So you'll see the sources. Effective CFA allows your lawyer, if he thinks you have a good case, to waive his fees if he gets it wrong and charge an extra amount in the event of a win. If you're, oh, this is the conditional fee agreement that you have to sign, the no win, no fee. So effectively, if a conditional fee agreement allows your lawyer, if he thinks you have a good case, to waive his fees. If he gets it wrong and charges an extra amount, it, waive his fees if he gets it wrong and charges an extra amount in the event of a win. If your lawyer wins, he can double his fees. The other side should have to pay them. If not, you pay nothing to your lawyer, but will still have to pay the other side's legal fees. You can take out an insurance policy to cover that cost using a loan to pay the premium if necessary. Again, the other side should meet the costs. So I guess this is in the worst case scenario. If the other side doesn't meet the legal costs, you're, you need an insurance policy to make sure you can pay it. Otherwise, they'll be on your back. <sighs> um, it might sound reasonably straightforward, but does no win, no fee work in practice? The National Association of Citizens Advice Bureaus, NACAB, is not convinced. Most personal injuries case, most personal injury cases settle out of court for in the region of 3,000 to 4,000, and that is not inclusive of costs, says Legal Affairs Policy Officer James Sandback. Costs under CFAs can be almost as much and instantly whatever you've gained is wiped out. So that's what I mean. You know, you can go through all of this and all you're doing is paying lawyers fees out of it. You don't end up getting anything. He reckons that the lessons of discredited claims management companies, claims direct and the accident group have yet to be learnt by the industry. Typical claims companies use their huge marketing might to drum up straightforward accident claims, try to settle them with the defendant's insurance and if they cannot pass them on to solicitors so you have to be careful of these people that call you on the phone that cold call you don't deal with any of those because they're the ones who will probably take on your case they get this they get all their fees paid because you've either have to pay through your insurance or some other means and you end up getting zilch so I think that's all for now. Pretty long video. Sorry about that, but I hope it's useful. Bye bye.